Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praise and glory unto the Hawah by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakhadash, the bonds unto the apostles and the elders of the MS who rule well, teach well, being great examples towards younger brothers, and peace and blessings, salutations to the hopeful lake out there pushing his word in truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, pushing and get up out of here, Shalom to the hopeful lake, the believers, the listeners. Whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yah by Shema Al Shah. What I want to get into this morning, you know, is being spiritually, you know, proactive, okay, with the scriptures, you know, they promote, all right, being active, all right, being an active in the spirit first and foremost, man, all right, because as we, you know, have an opportunity, like this is a privilege. You know, to be able to teach this word, to have this understanding, you know, to be in the camp. Like, this thing is a privilege, man. You know, to have, you know, the Holy Spirit, all right, to be able to read and get revelation. Like, all these things are privileges, you know, from Yahweh by Shema Oshah. These are gifts. These are, are blessings, you know. And that's why we got to really be proactive with the gift, you know, given unto us by Yahweh by Shema Oshah, you know. So when uh, uh, you go to the word proactive, all right, you get this word proactive. It says creating or controlling a situation by causing some thing to happen rather than responding to it after it has happened. Yeah, you know, someone is proactive. You know, is is using all right wisdom. Okay. And using the foresight, because that's how you go to that scripture. Uh, matter of fact, let's get it. Let's get that in Proverbs 22. All right, this is Proverbs 22 and 3. It says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil, okay, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on or are punished. So you see, that's being proactive. The prudent man foreseeth the evil. We know what times we in. We know what the Lord is about to bring to the earth. Okay? We know the Lord is angry at this current society, man. So what do we do? We hide ourselves in faith and obedience, man. Okay? That's being proactive in the spirit. <laughs> you see? And that's uh, uh, what the Lord is requiring of his men to be proactive in the spirit. You know? We go from, you know, being on the milk. You know, learning who we are, pretty much being the mockingbird of the apostles and elders. And then as we grow and mature in the faith, we start to become proactive in things, man. You know, start making moves based on wisdom. Okay. Start being proactive in, in, in every fashion, man, of our life, man. Because at the end of the day, it's all about being freed up as much as possible to do this work, man. You know, constantly putting off this world more and more and be freed up to do the work man you know that's what this thing is about okay so when you go here to proverbs the sixth chapter okay proverbs six and six it says go to the ant thou sluggard consider her ways and be wise and what's one thing about an ant an ant is extremely consistent extremely consistent an uh, ant is extremely resilient okay you can you can go knock down the ant bed okay this morning let's say it's 7 23 over here you knock down the ant bed at 7 23 in the morning all right the next day you go out there 7 23 it's gonna be built back up like the uh, ant has a drive that's crazy consistency that's crazy Teamwork, crazy. Okay, so when, when when King Solomon is saying study the ant, you know we really have to consider. Okay, what's the what's the characteristics of an ant? What does an ant do? And the ant is extremely proactive, man. Okay, <laughs> all right, and it says, which having no God overseer or ruler which means no one has to stand over their shoulder and tell them to do this do that has to tell them every move to make nah the ant they get they get to it <laughs> you see 
Each ant get each ant understand this responsibility and they get to it. Okay? And it says, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. How long will I sleep, O sluggard? When without a rise out of thy sleep? You know? So the description is like, look, the description is against being a, a sluggard, you know, being lazy, you know? That bare minimum spirit. The scriptures is against that, man. Okay? Because we all got our lots and we all got our portions, but we all should be increasing and growing within our lot and within our portion, man. Okay? The, the, the truth is not stagnant. This word is not stagnant. Prophecy is always happening. Things are always changing. We're always getting closer and closer to that moment. And the closer we get to the end, the more that's required of each of us, man. You know, the more that's required of each brother. To so, well, we gotta be proactive in our situation, man. Spiritually first. Okay, getting into these things, getting, you know, getting into the research, understanding what's going on, man. You know, watching, you know, <laughs> having having a clear understanding of what's going on, man. You see? And it says, you read in NLT. Uh, what, what, read verse 10 and say yet a little sleep a little slumber and a little folding of, of, of the hands to sleep and you read in the NLT it says a little extra sleep a little more slumber a little folding of the hands to rest yeah that you know uh, 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 putting things off that procrastinate spirit you know cause this flesh want to chill you know and I'm, and I'm speaking to myself first and foremost I know this flesh wants to chill Okay, the flesh wants to do the bare minimum in the spirit. The flesh really don't want to have anything to do in the spirit. That's why the Apostle Paul said that the spirit and the flesh war against each other. The spirit is willing. Yeah, I was trying to say that the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. Okay, and that's why we really got to constantly overcome the flesh, man. Overcome the emotion. Okay? Because being a slugger is a habit. It's nothing but a learned habit, man. Okay, just like being proactive is a, is a learning habit. All right, verse uh, 11, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Okay, so being a slugger only breeds poverty, not just physical poverty, but spiritual poverty, man. You know, because, you know, like I said, I've been on dry spells, man, not doing, you know, uh, 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 you know, not being disciplined and doing what I need to do and researching and studying and reading and you know, I've been undisciplined in that in that before, man. And I became impoverished. I started to become impoverished, man. Okay, it's in the spirit, you know, dry, really not having nothing to add at camp, having no precepts. His brother speaking, man, dry. Okay, I was becoming spiritually impoverished, man. Okay, because that's what being a slugger pr produces. It produces poverty. It produces a, a, a low yield. You know? Like, activity produces resources, man, in the spirit and in the physical. And it's all through the favor of Yahweh Hashem al because the Lord, he loves to see his men in motion. You know, he loves to see his men being active, man. And he blesses that. Okay? So reading again, it says, so shall thy poverty come, all right, as one that you will, and that and thy want as a as an armed man. Or you read in the NLT, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcely will attack you like an armed robber. You know? So as men, you know, we we really gotta be proactive in our situation. And the Lord gonna bless it, how he gonna bless it. Because at the end of the day, we all on, on Yahweh Bashim Al Shai's terms. Okay? But no, nothing is going to come to us in anything. It's just sitting here, man, and just, I'm going to just be a good, a good brother and things going to happen. No, you got to go make a move or two, man. You know, first in the spirit, you got to make spiritual moves. You know? There's a lot of times, you know, researching this thing and then this will pop up. Researching that thing, then they'll pop up. Going down them rabbit holes, man, and, 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 and researching, man. He <laughs> gets all them nuggets. But it started with uh, 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 
you know, the, the, the process, it started with, you know, the initial, okay, um, mindset, okay, I'm finna do this, I'm, I ain't, I don't care what's, I gotta do next, I'm finna, I'm finna make time for this, you know, I'm finna make time for this, you see, because that discipline and that fear kicks in because it's easy to be excited, you know, you have an idea, and you be excited about it, you know, but the discipline come in through that consistent execution of something, man, you know, let's go from there, let's get Proverbs 10 and 4. All right, Proverbs 10 and 4 says, He becoming poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Okay? But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becoming poor that dealeth with a slack hand, that bare minimum spirit. You know? You're going to you're gonna produce the you're gonna yield the bare minimum. Okay? Because one thing about it. It's about planting seeds because, you know, I can plant uh, a brother. If, if if a brother only plant, if I only plant 10 seeds, okay, then my possibility is only to yield 10, 10 fruit, you know? And it might, it might be lower than that. It might be six, seven. All of them might don't break through. But if I'm sowing 300 seed, well, I have a ceiling now of 300 to yield 300. Even if don't nothing but a hey, 150, 200 breakthrough. <laughs> you see? And that's what th th this thing is about. Like, as, as a man, I'm learning, like, you know, being active, being in motion, and being on a purpose, you know, constantly, you know? And then you have your time of rest. But see, you got to look at, you know, the... uh. The way how the Lord moves, you know, even with the beginning, because it said he worked six days and he rested one. Now, we know this talking about thousand year increments. OK, but you look at the rest compared to the work, the work far outweighs the rest. Rest is necessary. So it lets you know it's necessary. OK, <laughs> but their work was the always the main entree was their work being active, mm -hmm. creating you see? So you the, the work to rest ratio was six to one. <laughs> you see? All right. Yeah, hey, because we in the war. Because we in the war, Louis. We in the war to keep our health intact. We in the war to keep our um, diet intact. We in the war to, for energy. We in the war in every way, man. But it's a war. But we got to fight. We got to be proactive and fight. You know? And it says... Um, he becoming poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make him rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. And we're in the time of harvest, man. You know, we can't be, you know, uh, 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 slack handed in these times because we're in the time of harvest, man. What did Yahweh Shah say? He made that analogy. Okay, Yahweh Shah. Uh, when you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 9. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Okay, he's saying, Jake, you know, with no leadership, no God. <laughs> okay, so he said he had compassion on them. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Are few. And see, he said the laborers, man, there's a labor that goes into this thing. Man, there's a true labor before, you know, uh, uh, we can hit the record button. There's a labor. There's a toiling that goes into this thing, man. All right. Pray you, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Okay, the, the 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 ministry needs what laborers, man. <laughs> okay, proactive men in the spirit is that it's gonna go get it. You see, it's gonna get up and go get it, man. <laughs> you see, uh, don't nothing come to a wager. Don't nothing come to you know your fingers crossed, just hoping like no, nah, ain't gonna be in motion. You know, and the Lord gonna bless that 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 that, that motion. 
okay? Because it's going to be through him. It ain't going to be through our acts alone, okay? It's going to be the Lord blessing our faith because faith, okay, is shown in what works. You see? That's why when you go from there, let's get on um, Proverbs 13 and 4. And then we're going to go to the example on how, you know, the, the, the apostles, they all had that same mindset, man. You know, being proactive, man, being active in this ministry, man. You know, and then that spills over into our day-to-day, -day, man, being proactive in that way, man. You know? Um, let's go to uh, Proverbs uh, 13 and 4. All right, it said Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the sluggard desire and have nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Yeah, the soul of the sluggard desire and have nothing. You know, because the people who put in, in my experience, you know, in life, I find that the people that want the most, all right, are willing to do the less, to, less work to get it. You know, niggas talk, sit around, you know, the job, talk about what they want all day, you know, but a nigga won't work one hour overtime. All right, this ain't uh, saying that brothers go work themselves crazy at work, you know. This ain't what this is saying, but it all goes back to what a mindset. Because we in the time now, we have wisdom. We can make work smarter and, and be more efficient, but that even that takes being proactive, okay, and researching and learning things, all right, when it comes to that field. But overall, just in general, Men and women that want the most things are willing to work the less for it. You know, they, they don't want to put in their work to get it. They just sit around and screw out fantasies of what they want. Okay? But if somebody really want it, they're not going to talk much. If somebody really wants something, they're not going to talk much. They're going to get up and go get it, man. If you really want something, you gonna, your talking going to be a minimum. You're going to be action-oriented, man. And you're going to go get it. If you really want something, man. You know? So reading NLT, Proverbs 13 and 4, lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Okay? Ain't no ain't no shortcuts around it, man. That labor and that hard work and that discipline and that dedication, it got to be there. You can't take that out of the recipe. Suffering. You can't take that out of the recipe of greatness, man. It's, it's there. <laughs> you know? And we got to take hold of it, man. All right, now let's go to, you know, dealing with the apostles, all right, and deal with Apostle Paul. Second Corinthians 9 and 6, it says, but this I say, he that which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully, man. Okay, so you put out sparingly, you're gonna bring in sparingly. Okay? Ain't no ain't ain't no shortcuts, ain't no gimmicks, okay? Ain't no get rich quick schemes in the spirit. Like, nah, man, it's like you put out, okay? You 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 put out. All right, and you get back what you put out. <laughs> you know, that's just how it works. Ain't, you know, ain't, ain't, like I say, ain't no shortcuts, man. You got to deal with the toil and the strife that come with it. <laughs> you see the ups, the downs, the bad, the fall offs, the falling on your face, the getting back up. All that come with it, man. Okay? Losing losing everything, coming back. Losing again, come back. Increase, you know, it, 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 all, it all comes with it, man. <laughs> you see? Let's go from there. Let's get this in, um... This is on. Um, let me see if I can find them. Let's get that in First Corinthians fifteen. All right, this First Corinthians fifteen and fifty-eight. It said, "Therefore, my brethren, beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable." always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know 
that your labor is not in vain, okay? Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Now, let's get this word abounding, okay? For the, hey, the more we get into this thing, the more we believe, the more faith we have, the more no one can tell, tell us nothing, man. This is what making us unmovable, man. Abide in this labor, man. This is making us unmovable, man. And the more we get into this word, the less everything around, the less we care about all these things around us, man. We handle our responsibility. We handle our duties, okay? But our, our passion, our drive is, is, is for this only, man. Okay? This is why our passion and our drive is, man. Everything else around us starts to fade in the background and we get single focus. We get that hyper focus on this, man. Okay? So... Um, let me get that word abounding. All right, this is uh, that word abounding in the Greek. 1052. Perisuo. Perisuo. It says to exceed a fixed number of measure, to be left over above a certain number or measure. Okay, to exceed a fixed number. You know, this is all even with working out. They say you're going to do 50 push ups. Okay, well, you get to that 50. Oh, you still got five more wings. Knock out five more. You know? Like, that's the... And then it said, this is a mindset. <laughs> you see? The mindset to always want to go over to be abounding in this thing, man. Okay? Hey, the scriptures say, hey, we can never go hard enough. <laughs> okay? Since it was our mind to go astray, seek the Lord ten times more. Okay? It says, um, to exist or be had in abundance of things which come in abundance or overflows unto one, something falls to the lot of one in a large measure, okay? To exceed more than, okay? To exceed, you see? To make abundant or, or excellent. All right? And the main thing is going beyond the fixed number. You know? Going beyond that fixed measure. And that's, as men, that's how we constantly push ourselves to the limit and test ourselves, man. No growth comes from being comfortable, man. All right? From going through that same, you know, ritual, you know, your, your daily ritual. Like, nah, sometimes, hey, you got to crank it. You got to turn the knob up, man. Okay? Just on that treadmill, you got to put push that incline up a little more, man. <laughs> you know? You got to push that speed up a little more, man. See what see what we can do. You know? Constantly pushing the limits in this thing, man. <laughs> All right? And that's the mindset of a conqueror, man. Like a conqueror. You study those, 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 those ancient conquerors, man. You know? They was always one thing about it. Because, see, when you start studying different, you know, conquerors, what you start to see is... The similarities between, you know, the different conquerors, man. Okay? And one thing about it, they all would always push the limits. They always took a gamble on, you know, uh, the unknown, what, 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 other, what other generals wouldn't do, you know, what other kings wouldn't do. Okay? <laughs> uh, you know, they would always push the limit. You see? They will always do the unexpected, man. And that's what made them, that's what set them apart, man. Is that they was always willing to do what no one else wanted to try. Okay? They was always pushing themselves to the limit. <laughs> you see? They, they, they refused, refused, okay, <laughs> to, 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 to take the L. If it came, it came. Okay? But they, they was going to exact everything that they had in each in scenario they was in. They always went all out, okay? And then they utilized wisdom as well. And then, you know, a lot of you read their history, you know, prophecy was aiding them. And prophecy is aiding us. When it was time for Esau to come in power, them generals that was, that was, that was, that was, that was conquering, okay? Mimic the conqueror, okay? Them conquistadors. All right, them niggas were wicked. All right, but them niggas had a crazy drive, man, because prophecy was aiding them niggas, man. You know? Just like now, prophecy is aiding us because it's time for us to come in. 
Okay, it's, it, our rulership is at the doorstep, so prophecy is at our backs, man. <laughs> okay, let's go from there. All right, what did the Apostle Peter go? Second Peter chapter two. No, Second Peter chapter one. All right, Second Peter one and five it says, besides this, giving all diligence. Add to faith, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. Okay, you see that? And how can we, instead of giving diligence, we're going to go into that word, add to your faith what we believe virtue, okay, which is moral excellence, all right, being integrity, okay, and says, and to virtue knowledge. And how do we add knowledge, man? We got a label for that knowledge, man, <laughs> okay. The scriptures, I tell you, hey, you got to put wisdom on like a chains of feather. <laughs> you see? You got to be locked in. It says into knowledge, temperance, okay, which is what? Balance, okay? Self-control, restraint, all right? Patience, into temperance, patience, into patience, godliness, into godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity, into brotherly kindness, charity, man, that giving spirit. Because as we obtain things in, in this society, first in the spirit, we give it right back to the body. And as we obtain, if we obtain things in the practical, we still uh, are willing to give it what to the body. Okay, have a mindset to give it right back to the body. Give things back to the body, man. You know, so it's making us well-rounded. You see, and God and His brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness, charity. And that's another thing: the more we increase. You know, we don't become an asshole to look down to brothers. You know, we're here to exhort brothers, man. You know? Uh, we we here to exhort brothers, man, and, 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 and push brothers. <laughs> you see? As we push ourselves, man, as we're being pushed, man. <laughs> you see? Verse um, 8, it said, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamasiah. You see that? These things are producing. Labor is labor produces, man. Okay? Labor put in yields a certain output, man. And see, as we are proactive in the spirit, okay, laboring and toiling in the spirit is yielding, okay, fruits. <laughs> you see? And it says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Remember that the prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Yeah, see, we've been brought with a price. Yahweh Shah purchased us, man. And he didn't purchase us for us to chill and do the bare minimum and, you know, drag our feet in this thing. Nah, he purchased us to be proactive in the spirit, man, to go get it. He made an investment, man. You know, he expects a return. Okay? And it says, Wherefore the brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Okay? And, and diligence is always in in the recipe, man. All right? And that word diligence in Greek. Strong's G, 4704, Spudazo. 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 Okay, it says to hasten, to make haste, to exert oneself, endeavor, give diligence. Okay, to exert oneself. <laughs> you see? To exert oneself in this thing, man. All right? The, men, the, 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 the scriptures promote that, man. Exerting ourselves, man, like really hard body, man. You know, each brother within their own portion. You get that word, exert. All right, exert. It says apply or bring to bear. All right, a force, influence, or quality. Okay, make a physical or mental effort. You see, that's what this, that's what that's what this thing is about. A constant effort, man. A constant effort and moving forward. You see. 
go to the strong definition. It says to use speed, i.e. to make effort, to be prompt or earnest, to do diligence, to be diligent for endeavor, labor, or study. Okay? So the scripture promote that. <laughs> you see? Let's go to the book of James. This is the book of James, chapter 2. All right, in 14, it said, What do it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, as a matter of fact, let me reach on this point. It says, What do, what do it profit, my brethren, though a man may say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? So you read this in the NLT. What good is it, um, brothers? All right, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? So faith is shown by actions. When, we, when you really believe something, there's an action behind it. Okay? When you really believe something, there's an action behind it. If you really believe you can lose weight, there's action behind it. If you really believe you can gain muscle, there's action behind it. If you really believe you can start a particular business, there's going to be action behind it. King David had faith that he could beat the life. And what did he do? He put that action behind it. Okay? That's the type of faith, okay, that, that the Lord requires that faith coupled with that action, man. Okay? If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do the what do if it profit? Yeah, because you have faith, but then you start taking the practical steps based on faith, a plan of action. Okay, based on faith. Now the Lord, you know, He can, you know, we can have a plan of action, and the Lord will want it to be done another way, and that's what's going to be done, but. We have to start acting and then the Lord will modify our actions how he wanted to be. You know, as we start acting, you know, we might not, you know, have the, the, the plan that the Lord wants, but we're moving towards that way. And he starts modifying our plan of action to what he wants. Okay. It's all about the will of Yahweh by Shema Shah. It's, it's not going to be by us just, you know, um, strategizing our way out of every situation with that faith to know that I'm coming up with a strategy and the Lord going to guide me through this. He going to aid me through this, man. Okay? It says, even so faith, if it have not works, it being dead alone. Yeah, because it's just an idea. When Christians say they have faith, faith in what? They don't know what the kingdom is. They don't know about world war. They don't know about prophecy. They don't know what's going on. Faith in what? They don't understand nukes. That they, hey, we have faith that we're going to be delivered from nukes. They don't know what that is. They, faith in what? Okay, because you can have all these ideas and be inspired and be excited. As you know, We can be excited as we talk about these plans. Okay, as we talk about our wants with no plan of action. So then those ideas eventually are dead. You can talk about the same thing every day, you know, but with no action. Those things become dead. It's just an idea, just a thought. Okay? You know, and I, I, I said, I'm talking from experience, man. You know, just always talking about something but putting no action in it. Like, nah, man, you got to put action in it, man. You got to take the losses to come with it. <laughs> you see? You got to learn, you know? But that's where that patience comes in, man. You see? And it says... Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Okay? So the token of someone's belief is, 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 is in their action, man. The tokens of belief is in, 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 in action. Verse 19, Thou believest that there is one power, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? But without now, O vain man, their faith, but without, but with, 
But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay? <laughs> faith without works is dead. You see? So it has to be, be a work behind it, man. You know? And that's the ultimate showcase of faith. Look at our forefathers, man. Abraham, he was willing to put action behind his faith. You see, Jacob wrestled the angel all night. He put action behind his faith. You see? <laughs> uh, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, they put action behind their faith, man. You know? You go here to... Um, we end it here. This is Second Ezra chapter nine. All right, Second Ezra nine and six. It says, "Even so, the times also the highest have plain beginnings, and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs." And we see the effects and signs of the end. And every one that should be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. Okay, so everyone shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, you know, because faith produce works, you know. So that's the point. Just want to put that out there, man, being proactive in the spirit, you know, and then and, and the Lord blesses that, man, you know, <laughs> the Lord blesses activity, you know, something I've learned, you see. So, Lord, will you, brothers, all right, and. You few sisters of edify once again. I'm gonna give all praise on the glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Kapadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to our younger brothers. And peace and blessings, salutations to the hopeful shalom.